obviously getting a chance to uh, meet or, you know, become friends with Biggie early. Uh, give us one of your favorite Biggie stories. One of my favorite Biggie stories, one day there was an accountant by the name of Burt Padell. Burt Padell was like the dude that everybody used to have to go and pull up to to get their bread from when it came to like labels and shit. He was like the the top shelf accountant for all of like the big executives at the time. I've had to go to get some of my bread from features that I've done from Burt Padell. It was one day Biggie was over there getting a feature. We're well not getting a feature, getting a check from Burt Padell. And we was riding back to Brooklyn. And I ended up going to Burt Padell. I saw Biggie, I asked Biggie where he was going. He said he was going to Brooklyn. I said, you need a ride? He said, yeah. So he came in and went with me. We jet back, we go to Brooklyn, I go to his crib. When we get to his crib now, he let me hear the Ready to Die album. The fucking crazy shit is, while we there, he told one of his niggas to let everybody know that he got the Ready to Die album done and he he about to give it to everybody in the street. So niggas, you know, he already popping with the fucking kick in the door record and all of these shits is playing as like the singles to build the momentum or whatever. And Biggie feature game was crazy because Diddy had him on 112 shit and Total shit and everybody else shit. So it was like extremely intriguing and strange to me at the time because this is during the time where you, you, you would beat the fucking bootlegger up for selling your shit for $5. Biggie had the hood lined up in front of his building like a crack spot. But he was giving it to niggas for free. He wasn't even selling it. And I I couldn't understand. Bro, what are you doing? Niggas say, yo, bus. I'm going to make sure that the nigga that don't got my album look like he the hater. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, that was the illest way of thinking at the time because it was brilliant marketing. Mm -hmm. You already get promo shit to give to DJs and certain motherfuckers for free anyway because you need them to play it to advertise that your shit is out and that it's hot, right? He took it to a whole other place. He had the double cassette JVC box in the crib and he was dubbing his own fucking tape and just giving the shit away Mm. for free. Free promotion. Free promotion. It was most one of the most brilliant marketing schemes I've ever seen. And that was one of those that was one of those incredible moments. One other incredible moment, and I never told this story, not on the record. Oh, the smoke. So there's a song in the middle of the Biggie and the Tupac beef, and he recorded the verse in my studio session. The studio was called Soundtracks. The studio is located. Broadway between 21st and 22nd Street. At the time, I thought it would be brilliant to have these three MCs on a Jay Dilla beat. As I mentioned, he's one of my favorite producers to ever exist. First studio session, it was at a studio called Unique Studios around the block from Quad where Tupac got shot. This was a studio that Easy Mo B, another one of my favorite producers, he produced Flavor in Your Ear and many other classics, did most of Ready to Die. He used to work in the studio a lot. So I ended up booking this session and the song was supposed to have Nas, Method Man, Biggie, and Buster Rhymes on the same record. Mm. Jay Dilla beat. I got a $10,000 check in my pocket for Big. I think Big just got into the car accident with C's. So his leg was fucked up and the elevator wasn't working. Big come in the studio, he downstairs. Yo, I'm here, bus. I said, all right, well, the elevator just stopped working. So you you gotta come up the stairs. I said, Meth and Nas here. He was like, a word? Tell the bros I said, what up? But you ain't gonna see me tonight, my nigga. Fuck, I look like climbing up them stairs. My size and my foot fucked up. I said, my nigga, I got your bread. Nigga, I don't give a fuck if you had a trillion dollars upstairs. 
I ain't coming upstairs tonight, boss. <laughs> Big said, fuck you and fuck that. And Biggie bounced. We had another session. We in the same studio. No big. Interestingly, I don't know if anybody wrote their rhyme or even a piece of it, but nobody laid their shit because motherfuckers wanted to see what Biggie was going to do. Never got the Nas and Meth verse. I go to Soundtracks the third day. Elevator's fine. Big and C's come. They pull up. Meth and, and Nas came two days in a row now. No biggie. So they was not coming on the third day. We in the motherfucking stool. At the time, Branson is selling the most incredible bud in the hood. <laughs> and he was selling them in these jars that look like motherfucking pickle jars. Mason jars. Mason jars. C's would roll the blunts and Biggie would come with the Branson jars. And he rolling weed, blunt after blunt after blunt. And Biggie just sitting in this one of the studio chairs that got the wheels on it that roll around. He's sitting in that shit just doing this while a beat was playing. One hour, two hours, he just smoking. He ain't writing nothing. It's so about three hours in. I'm just like, my nigga, you ain't going, <laughs> you ain't going to do this verse, my nigga. And nigga said, I'm ready, boss. I said, ready, you ain't right shit. I'm ready, boss. Nigga go in the booth. He does the verse. Diamonds on my neck, chrome drop top. Nigga on the seat, like pound of green, ooh wee. You see the ugliest, money hungriest, Brooklyn Loch Ness, nine millimeter wand test, comfort test. And that, and the winner is not that thinner kid. Bandanas, tattoos, my skin never bruised. Land still cruise, Frank White. So you know what he doing. Yeah. You know who he going at. Oh, he's shooting. And, yeah. And that's your guy, though. That's my guy. Yeah. And. <clears throat> he goes and this other party goes he goes Kai uh, actor needs chiropractor for crack jaw yes I rocked your chatterbox dangerous you're not I gets down twist your body round and round mm. upside down mm. I said big I ain't putting this out <laughs> <laughs> I ain't putting this out, man. <laughs> because Pac was my friend too, right, man. Right, right. Pac choked the sound man out for me at a college show when we was leaders of the new school because we got there late. The nigga turned the equipment off and wouldn't let us get a sound check. This nigga Pac ran up on this man and just choked him. We only got one album out. He calling us legend. He's still dancing for fucking Digital Underground. We ain't legends yet, but in Pac eyes, we was the legends. I love these niggas, man. I got to be the mediator. I can't add fuel to this fire. I ain't put it out. So when Big Pass, Pac Pass, did he working on the Born Again album? And if you listen to the Born Again album, Biggie was, Diddy was looking for verses that might have been laying around that was never released commercially that big had recorded and I told Diddy that I had this verse for a long time. So when Diddy wanted the verse, I said, you gotta give me back the money that I paid big. You could have a verse because I already know that number one, I wasn't putting it out with the, the back and forth. And I also knew that once Biggie passed, Whatever was going to happen with Big, Big Moms needed to sanction it. She needed to bless it. She needed to be okay with it. I knew Puff had to clear it. So I wasn't going to be able to put it out anyway, even if I did do it the way that I ended up doing it on the Born Again album. Because if you listen to the Born Again album, there's a song called Dangerous Some Seas. And I told Diddy, if I give you this verse, I need to control this record creatively. So I went and got one of my favorite producers, Knots the Ruler from VA. He gave me one of the craziest beats. Snoop, Mark Curry, myself, and Biggie is on the song. 
but in the lines where Biggie might have said something to Pop, I muted those lines and I put bars there to cover up those disses. So it sounded like me and Big going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's one of the gems that the world finally got to hear about. Wow. Oh, that's dope. So y- y- y'all getting that story from the motherfucker. Y'all getting the real that. smoke yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs>